And hello to everybody. Uh, we're looking at chapter 8.4, uh, Areas of Composite Figures. This is the final installment of the uh, chapter 8 uh, area, or chapter 8 section of circles. Um, so we're looking at, again, the area of composite figures. And uh, I guess we'll begin by looking at uh, what to do in general when speaking of finding the area of composite figures. So to find the area of a composite figure, you would want to separate it, the composite figure, into figures with areas you know how to find. Then find the sum of the areas of those figures. So in all reality, most of the figures you're gonna see that will make up a composite figure will be uh, a triangle, a trapezoid, a rectangle, a parallelogram, and either a circle, well, typically a semicircle. Uh, we already know the formulas for circles and semicircles, um, and I believe you've learned most of the other uh, formulas, but I have listed them right here. So we have a triangle, which is one-half base times height, which I'm sure you've learned at some point. Then this is the one that may be a little new for some of you. This is the trapezoid. So with the trapezoid, you always have two bases that are parallel from each other. You remember learning that when we uh, dealt with uh, quadrilaterals. So a, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And those parallel sides are never equal. Well, what we can do is we can add the two parallel sides together and then um, uh, take that sum, multiply it by one half, and then take that and multiply it by the height. And so the formula is one half parentheses base one plus base two parentheses times height. And you use that, you find the area of a trapezoid. Uh, next, we have area of a rectangle, which is the same thing as area of a square, and it's just base times height. And then finally, this is kind of an important one, uh, area of a parallelogram. Now, I know with a rectangle, you could also think of the area of a rectangle as length times width. Uh, the reason you can do that is because with uh, a rectangle, you always have right, de you know, 90 degree angles, right angles. So the length and the width is always the base and the height. Well, with a parallelogram, you sometimes have a length, a width, and a height. And so the height is, um, you can always tell what the height is because it always creates a right angle. It's always perpendicular with the base. So you look for that uh, 90 degree angle and the two lines that connect it will be your base and the height. You have to use the base and the height for the parallelogram. So you'll want to jot these uh, formulas down. Uh, maybe on that very front page at the bottom, there's some space. Throw those uh, formulas down there, and you'll have those at your disposal uh, for this chapter. It'll be, uh, it'll be helpful. Okay? I'm going to move on. All right, we're going to begin with um, using grid paper to find the area. And... Of course, this is a form of estimation, and um, the first example is, uh, although it's a little tedious, it's, I think it's, it's fairly easy to do. Uh, this, the first problem that you have to solve is not as obvious, and so uh, I, may, uh, I may take you through the next problem and treat it as an example and then have you do um, the last problem, or I'll at least get you started. Okay, so uh, here we go for this one. Um, when, we, when we see our uh, figure here, you can tell that there are several squares that are complete whole squares. I'm going to outline it here. So everything within my green lines, everything inside here is... A, um, an entire whole square. So what I can do, and this is where it can be a little tedious, and it, it just going to depend on preference, I can count up my whole squares. I can say whole. And I can add these up. I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So I see there's 45 
whole square. So I'm going to put 45 over here. Now the next part is looking at the partial squares. As you can see, for my partial squares, these, oops, no, it's not helping. Um, these are mainly half squares. The triangles look like they're split right in half. You know, you split the squares right in half. And since these are pretty much half squares, we can say half and there are five of those. So five times one half equals two and a half. Okay? And uh, since there are two and a half squares, we can add that to the 45. So the area is about 47 and a half units. So basically you're just, um, you're combining the, the holes with the halves, and that's about what you come up with, is 47 and a half units, or 47.5, okay? Now, I'm going to take you through the next one, because uh, I think two, pretty easy to do. The other one creates some issues. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify all the holes. And so it's anything up here. And over here, oops, uh, actually this one is not a hole. I know this gets a little confusing, so just bear with me. We're looking for entire whole ones that have not been impeded at all, have not been cut into at all. Okay, as you can see, I have some, uh, I have some almost whole ones, and I have some definite hardly any ones, and then I have some uh, definite half-looking ones, right? And so let's take a, a closer look at this. And again, I, I'm going to be pretty, um, pretty lax about this, as long as you can argue your point, um, justify it a little bit. But this is what I see. I see over here and um, over here appear to be the only two halves. You know, they look really close to being halves. So I'm going to say uh, for the halves, for the half pieces, there are two of them. So two times one half equals one. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I see right here, right here, right here. To me, these are going to be what I'm going to call uh, big. They're three big. They're not whole, but they're, they're pretty close. They're a bit, some of them are closer than others. They're, they're pretty big. And then I have, um, let's see. Then I have partials. It's like this one here, this one here, and this one here. Those I would refer to as little. They're not. They're not a half. One of them, you know, one of them is getting close to a half, but maybe is a third. But those would be what I'd say three little. If I take the three big and the three little and I combine them, I get a total of about three. Again, we're doing approximates, right? So it's, it's about three. So bear with me on that, right? And then finally, I have, the, I have the holes. So again, you can count this however you like. Uh, I'll, I'm going to just count it this way. It's easiest for you to see. I go one. Hang on, where am I at? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So I have for whole, I have 33. So if I'm going to add 33, 3, and 1, I end up getting um, about 37 units, and I forgot to do that earlier, squared. About 37 units squared. These are square units, so uh, I forgot to do that here. So this should be units squared, right? Or square units. Okay, so I hope that is hope that helps you understand. It's a little confusing, but hopefully that helps you a little bit. I want you to try number two. Two is way easier than one. It's closer to the uh, uh, the example problem. So go ahead and give it a try. All right, let's take a look at number two. Again, this one's a little bit easier, I think. Um, if I was to uh, deal with my triangles first, because I, I see all, like basically half triangles are my partials, so let's be careful about this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not as good that way. Oops. Uh, seven. 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 uh, halves. So for half, the half triangles, or half squares, I have 10. So 10 times 1 half equals 5. And then after that, I have all squares. Uh, so I have, uh, let's go ahead and go through this. I have 1, oops, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty two, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six. I have forty six whole. Hopefully that's what you came up with. So if I take the 46 with the 5, I'm going to get a total of 51 units. So about 51 units squared. And actually, it's to me, it gets easier when we are actually dealing with the, uh, the shapes that we know, uh, when we're not dealing with abouts. Uh, not dealing with estimation, it, it gets easier and quicker because it all deals with uh, with formulas. So let's go ahead and move forward and take a look. Now, we have a basketball court here, right? Like uh, uh, the area where we have like our, uh, the paint is what it's called, and uh, the, the uh, free throw line, and uh, the semicircle uh, leads out to the three-point line, uh, which is directly behind the free throw line. So. Uh, it says, find the area of the portion of the basketball uh, court shown, okay? And it says the figure is made up of a rectangle and a semicircle. I know you see a circle, but it's a semicircle we're looking at. So we're looking at everything inside of this entire shape. Okay, and it just so happens we have a semicircle and we have a rectangle. So the way I want you guys to do it, I want you to show me exactly what you're breaking this into. It may seem like more work, but that's fine. I still want you to do it, and you need to do it just like this. If you don't do it like this, I'll know you didn't watch the notes. Uh, so you're going to do area equals, and you have, uh, this is the rectangle. So if you put REC for rectangle, that's fine. We know that it's base times height. So I just plug in my values, which is easy enough. We have 19 by 12. And we come up with an area of 228. 
And then we're going to do the uh, area of the semicircle. So again, I'm just going to put down semi. So with the semicircle, I have area equals one half pi r squared. Or if you want to do you know pi r squared times one half or pi r squared divided by two, they all mean the same thing. So it doesn't make a difference to me how you write that. They just have to have those uh, moving parts. So I have one half times 3.14 times 6, so that's the radius, we are given the uh, diameter, and we're going to square it. We take these numbers into our calculator, and we multiply, and we get, I guess, approximately 56.52. And if we combine the rectangle and the semicircle, which you see right over here, we're going to get uh, 284.52 feet squared. So the area is about uh, 284.52 feet squared. So make sure when you're doing a uh, word problem that you uh, use a complete sentence. So you can put down like the, the area of the basketball section is, and then write it down. Okay, here's our next example. In this one, uh, I see three different areas. Um, I see a triangle. We'll do that one first. If you want to put try, you can. So with my triangle, I know that is uh, area equals base times height times one half. And I put in my values. And you got to look for, when you're doing base times height, you got to look for that right angle. So we have 11.2 times 4.5 times 1 half. Or you can use, you can use 0 0.5. Uh, when I do this, I end up getting uh, 25.2. And then I'm ready for my next uh, shape. My next shape, I have a rectangle. So I just put rec down. I have area equals base times height. Uh, my dimensions of the rectangle, which is right over here, uh, is 4.5 times 8. So I'm going to do uh, 8 times 4.5. And then when I multiply that together, I get area equals 36. And then I have the parallelogram. I'll just put para. For the parallelogram, again, it's area equals base times height. So this is where I have to be careful. The, um, the base and the height, they make that, that perpendicular right angle uh, um, conjunction together. I don't even know if I, I just made that word up. That's funny. Um, I don't even know if that's appropriate there. Uh, but they, they, they join there at a right angle, which is called per, a perpendicular line. Um, and so you're going to multiply the uh, 8 uh, times the 6.7. And when I do that, uh, I'm going to get uh, 53.6. And then basically I'm going to add these all together. So I'm going to add all three of these together. And when I add them together, which you can see right over here, I'm going to get uh, 114.8 centimeters squared, right? So the area is 114.8 square centimeters, all right? So uh, this is going to be it for you. I want you to try number three and number four. And uh, that's going to be the last two problems in your notes. So go ahead and give these a try. See how you do. Uh, make sure you specifically point, you know, label each one of the shapes and show your formulas, the three lines, and then come up with your answer. Uh, no sentences needed because these are just problems. All right. We'll see you in a moment. OK, 
Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at these uh, problems. Uh, for number three, uh, there's only two shapes that make this up. We have a rectangle and a triangle. So we'll do the rectangle first. And uh, for the rectangle, we do area equals base times height. Um, and again, it's right over here. We have uh, 9 times 7. So the area equals 60, uh, equals uh, 63. Then we have our triangle. So for the triangle, we do area equals 1 half base times height. So I have 1 half times, and again, I have to look for the right angle uh, where it meets the base. So um, it's going to be uh, 9 times 6. And I multiply that, I get 27. And if I add these together, I will get area equals 90. meters squared. That's all you do for that area. Pretty easy. Now for our next problem here. As you can tell we have in the middle we have a square. I can say it's a square because you see I have two, 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 and two uh, describes the diameters of the circles. It's also the side lengths of the squares. So I have one square and we'll get to the other shapes here in a minute. So with the square I do area equals, you can do base times height, length times width, or if you want you can put S squared. Any of those are fine, they do the same thing. So I have area equals uh, 2 times 2 and then area equals 4. Then I notice I have four semicircles. If I have four semicircles, that means I have two circles. So I'm going to do uh, circles. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put down uh, area equals uh, pi r squared. And I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply this by 2 because there's two of them. So that's where that part comes in. I make it green to make it a little different than the actual formula. So I have area equals 3.14 times, well, if the diameter is 2, that means the uh, radius is 1, so 1 squared, and then times 2. Then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this all into my calculator. And when I put this all into my calculator, I get 6.28. I can add these together. And I get the area, since we have a circle, it's approximately uh, 10.28. feet squared. And that is how we do our area of composite figures. So best of luck. Uh, your chapter test will be coming up here pretty soon, so I hope you guys do well. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. Take care.